Hi guys, welcome back sa YouTube channel ko. So for today, ang sagutan naman natin is yung grade uh, 8 2019 MTAP Metro Bank Math Challenge Division Orals. Ito yung mga difficult questions for grade 8 last year. So sagutan natin, ano yung pakita natin yung mga approach dun sa mga 60 second questions para mas ma-appreciate natin ano ba yung pinakamadaling way ng pag-solve nito in time pressured contest like Metro Bank Math Challenge. Okay? So dictate ko yung mga tanong, then sagutan natin. Okay, number one, a number X is 15% more than a number Y. So, X is 15% more than Y. Tapos, sinabi pa rito na, and the number Z is 20% more than X. Anong hinahanap? Ang hinahanap, mga Lodi, How many percent more than Y is Z? Ulitin natin yung tanong mga Lodi ah. So ang tanong, a number X is 15% more than Y and the number Z is 20% more than X. How many percent more than Y is, uh, is Z? So anong gagawin natin dyan? So makinig mga Lodi. Ang pinaka best assumption kasi dyan is kapag mag a tayo ng numbers dito, 100 yung pinaka-best. Kasi nga, kapag kunyari, kinuha mo yung 15% ng 100, that is 15. So, just add 15. So, i-assume natin na yung y natin is equal to 100. Kasi siya yung magiging base natin. So, ito yung una nating solution. Ito yung tinatawag natin na trial and error. Pero, approach under naman, reasonable din. I mean, tama din naman siya. Kasi ito yung mas kina, I mean, gusto rin ng iba. Pero, ito turo ko rin naman yung proper way. So, y is 100. So, 15% more than y. Ano 15% ng 100? That is 15. So, that is 100 plus 15% ng 100. So, that is equal to 115. Okay, next. Z naman tayo. Z daw, 20% more than ang x. So, what we will do is to get the 20% of the value of x. Then, i-add natin dun sa original niya. So, 115 plus the 20% of 115. Ano ba 20% ng 115? That is 23. 23 plus 115, that is equal to 138. Since ito yung magiging basehan natin, itong dalawang to, how many more, ano yun, ang nakalagay dito, how many percent more than Y is Z? Therefore, ang magiging mangyari dyan, 138 minus 100, so that is equal to 38%. So, that will be our final answer. Okay? So, yun yung una nating solution. Pero, uh, ano na siya, parang, parang madali siyang intindihan eh. So, yung next naman natin is true assumption. I mean, in terms of, uh, ito yung formal solution niya, in terms of the variables. Okay? So, anong gagawin natin? X is 15% more than Y. So, we have X is equal to 1.15 Y. Bakit 1.15 sir IJ? Kasi yung 15%, ibig sabihin nun that is 0.15 ng Y plus yung Y itself. Kaya naging 1.15, parang 100 plus 15, that is 115. So, ano mangyari ngayon sa Z? So, yung Z natin, that is 1.2 times 1.5 ng 15 ng Y. Bakit naging ganyan? Kasi ba diba, ito yung X natin. E di kung 20%, that is 100 plus 20, that is 120%, that is 1.2 times lang natin dun sa x. Pag tinimes natin tong dalawang to, ang lalabas ay 1.38y. So, may kita natin, 0.38, that is 38% more than uh, zz kay y. So, di ba madali lang siya mga loody? So, ayun. At least nakuha natin yung dalawang approach. Okay? Proceed tayo sa problem number 2. Okay, problem number 2 sa difficult round. So, medyo madali lang to. The sum of 3 raised to x and its reciprocal is a. Ang inahanap, find the sum of 9 raised to x and its reciprocal in terms of a. So, ganito lang yan mga Lodi. Kung titignan natin, 9 raised to x, ang 9 is square siya ng 3. Diba? So, kung square siya ng 3, Therefore, pwede kong gawin, Sir IJ, I'll do some algebraic manipulation, then ita-try kong i-square the first equation. 
So, we will do is square this first equation. How do we square a binomial? A squared plus 2AB. So, that is 3 raised to x squared plus twice ng product ng dalawa nating terms plus 1 over 3 raised to x squared equals square din natin yung kanan. Siyempre, ibabalance natin eh. Squaring both sides. So, alam natin na kapag exponential, eto times, eto, di ba, power raised to power, just multiply them. So, pwede natin pag-switch yan, 3 squared raised to x. Agree ba mga Lodi? That's just the same. Sir IJ, same. Kasi nga, eto 2x, eto 2x din. Minultiply natin. Plus, eto ay mawawala to. So, plus 2 plus 1 over 3 squared raised to x equals a squared. Eh, ano ba ang 3 squared? 9 raised to x. Tapos, eto, ganun din. Pero since may 2 tayo dito sa gitna, therefore, ilipat natin sa kabila, a squared minus 2. So, ang magiging final answer natin ay eto na. a squared minus 2. Diba, napakadali lang niya. Akala natin kasi mahira, pero hindi naman pala. So, we just need to uh, perform basic. Yung mga, balikan natin yung mga basic factoring natin. Squaring binomial. So, ganun lang siya mga nodi. Okay? Question number 3. For problem number 3, a car and a bus approach the same intersection from roads which are perpendicular. If the car averages 60 kph, so for number 3, so meron tayong dalawang roads that are perpendicular. So let's say, ito yung isa natin. So perpendicular naman yung dalawang yan. So let's say yung car natin, 60 kph. So ito yung car, kunyari 60 kph to mga Lodi. Tapos yung bus daw natin ay 80 KPH. Anong sinabi sa tanong, Sir IJ? What is the distance between the car and the bus 12 minutes after they cross the intersection? So, kunyari, uh, ito yung intersection nila. 12 minutes, ano da yung magiging distance nila? So, Pythagorean theorem lang yan, mga Lodi. So, ang gagawin lang natin, we just need to get the distance they traveled after 12 minutes. So, how do we get the distance? The distance is equal to the speed multiplied by the time. Kasi normally, kapag sa physics yan, ganito yan. VT yan, mga Lodi, velocity times time. Eh, gawin na lang muna nating speed para mas madali maintindihan. So, what will happen? Ang 12 minutes, we have to convert it first to hours. So, how many? 60 minutes for every 1 hour. Agree, mga Lodi? So, this is equal to 12 over 60 or that is 1 fifth ng isang oras. So, what will happen is that we will multiply them. So, for the 80 kph, so yung distance ng, ano ba yung 80? That is the bus. So, yung distance ng bus, lagay natin, ito is bus, mga Lodi. That is equal to 80 multiplied by 1 fifth. So, that is 16 kilometers. Tapos, yung distance naman ng car, that is 80, ay sorry, 60 times 1 fifth. That is equal to 12 kilometers. Ang hinahanap distance between them, apply Pythagorean Theorem. Or kung alam mo yung triple na 3, 4, 5, Pythagorean triple na 3, 4, 5. Ano ibig sabihin nun? So, 3 squared plus 4 squared equals 5 squared. E eto, 12 tsaka 16, di ba? Pag dinivide mo both sides yan by 4, that is 3 and 4 na. So, ibig sabihin, kung dinivide natin siya by 4, kung 3, 4, 5 siya, 5 times 4, that is 20. Yung pinaka-distance natin. Or, applying Pythagorean theorem, that is square root of 16 squared plus 12 squared, that is square root of... 256 plus 144 that is square root of 400 therefore the distance between them after 12 minutes is 20 kilometers kaya na yung magiging distance niya mga lodi okay so napakadali lang naman niya di ba okay proceed tayo sa number 4 kung nakita mo agad na 345 yan mga lodi matik Easy na lang yan sa inyo. Ano ba yung mga common Pythagorean triple, Sir IJ? 3, 4, 5, 5, 12, 13, 7, 24, 25, tsaka 8, 15, 17. Yun yung normal na ginagamit natin. Yung mga pinaka mababang coefficients. Or ano? Uh, constants. Number 4. A function f is defined on the set of positive integers as follows. f of 1 is equal to 1. And for all integers n greater than or equal to 2, f of n 
equals f of n minus 1 minus 2. Ang hinahanap, find f of 5. So, madali lang yan mga Lodi. Ang tawag kasi dito mga Lodi, recursive formula. So, parang nakadepende tayo dun sa mga terms, dun sa expression natin, or dun sa sequence natin to get the next terms. So, f of n is f of n minus 1. So, how do we get f of 1? Binigay na. Paano yung f of 2? That is f of 2 minus 1 minus 2. So, that is f of 1 minus 2. Ano yung f of 1 natin? 1 minus 2, that is negative 1. Ito na yung f of 2 natin. Pwede mo kasing isa-isa yan. Ang hinahanap lang naman is f of 5. Hindi naman ganun kalayo. So, magiging f of 3 natin, that is uh, f of 2 minus uh, 2. Kasi di ba magiging 3 minus 1, that's 2 minus 2. Ano ba f of 2 natin? Negative 1 minus 2, that is negative 3. So, parang ang ginagawa lang pala natin, Sir IJ, Minus 2 lang tayo ng minus 2, di ba? Nakita niyo yung logic, napakasimple lang. F of 4, F of 3, minus 2, that is negative 3, minus 2, negative 5. Therefore, ang F of 5 is F of 4, minus 2, that is negative 5, minus 2. Ilan itong mga Lodi? Negative 7. So, yan ay magiging final answer natin. Di ba? Sobrang dali lang yung mga Lodi. So, hindi kayo mahihirapan when, comes, uh, when it comes with the with such type of problem. Okay? Last number, number 5. Okay, problem number 5. So, meron tayong diagram. In the figure, angles and sides of measures as indicated but are not necessarily drawn to scale. Arrange A, B, C, D, E in increasing order. So, ilagay natin yung drawing mga Lodi ha, para makita natin. Meron tayong triangle, tapos meron din tayong triangle dito. Okay, so meron tayong 50 degrees. This is 53 degrees. Tapos meron tayong A. Ito ay 92. Although hindi lang siya mukhang 92 mga Lodi, pero na drone to scale naman yan. So ito ay B. Ito ay C. Ito ay D. Ito ay E. Ito ay 52 degrees. Okay, ang hinahanap, arrange them in increasing order. So, how do we deal with this, mga, uh, Sir IJ? So, unang-una nating mapapansin, ang pwede nating makuha sa kanila is yung mga angles din nila. Pero, we have an included side, which is side E for this triangle and this triangle. Ito, tsaka ito, ang common nila is yung side E. So, how do we get ba, Sir IJ? So, paano natin malalaman ngayon kung ano yung ano nila arrangement in terms of the side measurements. So, how do we deal with this, Sir IJ? So, ganito yung mangyari, mga Lodi. So, pwede nating unang gawin is i-consider muna natin itong triangle ABE. So, that is, ito, let's say, ito is angle natin. Itong angle na to, 92 plus 50, that is 142. 142 minus natin sa 180, from 180, 180 minus 142. So, this is 38 degrees. Same din dito mga Lodi, 52 plus 53, 105. 105, 180 minus 105, that is 75 degrees. Okay, analyze na natin. Since ito ay common dito, so pwede mo muna siya i-consider na per triangle. So let's say, uh, consider natin yung sa triangle na may sides A, B, and E. Di ba alam nyo yung concept na yung side na pinakamalaki or pinakamahabang side is opposite ng largest angle. Diba? That is the ano, concept dun sa triangle natin. So, ang tawag dun kasi mga Lodi, yung hinge theorem. Hinge theorem meaning, kapag yung side mo is pinakamalaki or pinakamahaba, that is opposite the largest angle. Uh, same din sa short, smallest angle, katapat niya yung shortest side. So, anong pinakamalaking angle dito mga Lodi? 92. Therefore, from this value mga Lodi, so, ang pinakamalaki is E. Ano yung next na malaki? Yung B. Kasi 50 to. Tapos, ito 30. Ito yung pinakamaliit. So, it follows that A is less than B is less than E. Di ba mga Lodi? Ito pinakamaliit yung katapat ng 38A. Tapos, B. Tapos, E. Next, dun tayo naman sa C, D, E. So, ano mangyari? Anong pinakamaliit dito mga Lodi? 52, 53, 75. Tama, idol, 52. Anong katapat ng 52? E. Next, ano next na pinakamaliit? 
yung katapat ng 53 that is C tapos yung last ay angle D or sorry side D but angle nilagay ko dito sorry mga lodi kama kama tapos ah nilagay ko pala less than okay sorry A less than B less than E tapos E is less than C is less than D so ano nang gagawin natin dyan sir IJ e eh, di arrange na natin siya since eto is mas maliit dito kunin lang natin yung intersection that is A is less than B is less than E is less than C is less than D therefore kapag inarrange natin siya in increasing order that is A kama B kama E kama C kama D so ito na yung magiging final answer natin mga lodi okay so ulitin ko gamitin lang natin the side opposite the largest angle is the longest side the side opposite the smallest angle is the long smallest or shortest side okay So just in case meron kayong questions or clarifications, huwag kayong mahiyam magtanong mga Lodi. Thank you so much for subscribing and I hope you all the best. Pagpalain tayo ng Panginoon. See you on my next math tutorial videos. Bye-bye!